This week on Latter-day News, artistic work that commemorates the 200th anniversary of the first vision, also transforming a damaged Book of Mormon into a piece of art. And finally, take a peek at the Pioneer Temple one year into its restoration project. But first, the headlines. In honoring our veterans this week, do you recognize these church leaders? Yes, that's President Nelson, President Oaks, and President Irene. We ought to always have a prayer in our heart. But there is something about saying the words, and for me, saying them out loud. Elder Holland shares how he prays in the latest Hear Him video. Prayer is an expression of the heart, and I, we can pray silently. We ought to pray silently. We ought to always have a prayer in our heart. But there is something about saying the words, and for me, saying them out loud. From there, click Launch to begin your experience and choose a topic that you'd like to explore. Maybe it's serving others, forgiveness, or learning a little more about Jesus. The church just released a new app called Become that helps people each day draw closer to God. Find out more at become.org. Then in social media, fellow pilot Elder Uchtdorf wishes the candy bomber a happy 100th birthday. It is a great privilege and pleasure to join in celebrating, honoring, and congratulating Colonel Gail Halverson on his 100th birthday. Hal is a dear friend, a fellow aviator, and a true disciple of Christ. And finally, two sister missionaries in Leeds, England, transform an old waterlogged Book of Mormon into a beautiful mosaic of the Savior. And that's the headlines. This week in Temple Updates, two Temple Groundbreakings. My ancestors settled winter of 1861. We've lived here as long as anybody can live here. We, we're, we're like the mosquitoes and the alkali in the raging Virgin River. We've been here forever. First, Elder Holland presides in person at the Red Cliffs Utah Temple. Then Elder Bednar presides virtually over the Bentonville, Arkansas Temple. As I stand here now and think of the faces, and the people that I love and the influence that they have had in my life, in Susan's life, and in the life of our family. I am filled with deep gratitude. And the St. George Temple reaches its renovation milestone. Just one year ago, the temple started its major renovation project. The temple will have a new entrance and the foundation will be reinforced. The load from the building will be transferred to these uh, micropiles that are driven deep in the earth. They basically drill down anywhere between 35 to 40 feet deep, and this temple has lasted 142 years on the existing foundations. After beefing this up, we're going to be able to ensure that the foundations last far beyond that. Aside from the structural work, much thought and care has been given to the new landscaping. This idea that St. George will blossom like a rose is a very important part of this community. This town is very proud of its landscape, of its trees, of its plantings. We're adding so many more trees than were originally here on the site. When people come here for the open house, it will be green and lush and beautiful. The new temple will have a style that fits the 1870s construction by pioneer hands, as the old meets the new. As we anticipated the 200th anniversary of the first vision received by Joseph Smith, the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles pondered what we might do to commemorate appropriately this unique event. President Nelson told members from the Sacred Grove to remember the 200th anniversary of the first vision this year. BYU Magazine put together a collection of six artistic takes that tell the story of this sacred event. Now, there's the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I want to use art to portray in one image a thousand words. Instead of a typical column of soft white light, I portrayed yellow, almost Old Testament fire. Joseph, in multiple of the accounts, mentions the word fire. Now, he even in his first attempt says, I saw a column of fire, and then crosses it out and says, I saw a column of light. The concept of fire in the grove was also mentioned famously by BYU philosophy professor Truman G. Madsen in this 1978 lecture on the first vision. That 
the young prophet expected to see the trees of the grove consumed and was surprised when they were not. A minimalist artist, Benjamin Crowder, displayed the first vision with simple lines and shapes, while Daniel Lefevre uses black and white to contrast the pure white of the heavenly beings and the column of light with the dark of the world around Joseph. Although stunning, each artwork represents a slightly different version of what may have happened. We need to form our conceptions of the vision based off what Joseph said, not necessarily what artists like me have depicted. Depictions of the first vision can inspire us and inform us, but they can also, in my opinion, slightly limit us because we think that that is the way it must have happened when there's a lot of ways to envision the vision. Come back every Friday for more Latter-day News.